Okay, can you see my my slides? We can see. Yes. Okay, I'm Federico Cipolletta. I'm currently working as a postdoc at the CCRG of uh, the RIT since uh, April. And I will present uh, our recent development of the Spritz GRMHD code uh, with the collaborators. Uh, so Bruno Giacomazzo, Riccardo Ciolfi, Jay Carinani, Lorenzo Sala, Eduardo Giangar Giangrandi, and the whole uh, TCAN collaboration. Uh, just to recap briefly uh, what uh, Spritz uh, is about, let's say, uh, we have uh, already uh, published a paper uh, in which we described uh, how the, um, the features are implemented in the Spritz GMHD code. Basically, we are evolving the magnetic field through the evolution of the staggered vector potential, and this allows us uh, to um, accurate evolve the magnetic field, as you can see in this figure. Basically, this is um, the results of, um, uh, of the first Batsara shock tube test, uh, in which uh, uh, the comparison between a staggered and non staggered version of, um, of, the, of the code are, co are compared. Basically, you can see that in the non staggered uh, version, uh, there are some post shock post-shock uh, oscillation, which are avoided uh, by the staggered uh, formulation for the vector potential. Then in Spritz, we also uh, implemented several reconstruction order, basically the second uh, mean mod order and uh, the third order PPM method. Uh, we also implemented for the usage of uh, EOS Omnithorn, uh, allowing the user to, to call for uh, every kind of equation of state. Uh, we perform several uh, and extensive testing in uh, 1D, 2D, and 3D, and we showed the uh, second order convergence overall. Uh, the, the recent uh, uh, development concerned uh, the implementation of um, some features in order to evolve uh, the tabulated equation of state. Uh, tabulated equation of state uh, are of the form, for example, of uh, for, um, uh, that you can see in the website that the Compose, Compose website. So basically you have uh, all uh, the variables that are uh, as uh, um, the pressure that is a function of uh, uh, rho, t, and y, so temperature and electron fraction. So one needs to uh, select uh, one slice for the equation of state for this three-dimensional table and we decided to, and we perform basically as uh, two kinds of, of slices for the initial data with the constant temperature or constant uh, entropy. Uh, you need a code for producing the initial data and it is uh, the Lorin code, which uh, was uh, uh, very well described by Josh and collaborators. Uh, and you, you need to, uh, a code for reading the initial data thorn, uh, the initial data um, from Lorin, so uh, another thorn basically. Uh, you need a code for setting uh, the beta equilibrium at initial data. Uh, you also need uh, an additional scheme for uh, conservative to primitive uh, reconstruction, as uh, Leo already mentioned. So basically, you should consider uh, uh, the evolution for temp of temperature and, uh, and the entropy. And you should consider also uh, a code for neutrino leakage. Here we, we choose uh, uh, the Zelmani leak code by Otto et al. Uh, ah, one, uh, one mention here for the Contuprim, new Contuprim, we are using uh, the Palenzuela 1D method. Uh, basically, uh, when dealing with the tabulated equation of state, you should uh, uh, consider, as I, say, as I said, the pressure as a function of uh, rest mass, temperature, and YE. So basically, you need uh, an additional equation to your conservative formulation that is for the, the electron fraction. And uh, while the temperature and the entropy are related to the other uh, uh, quantities, basically via the equation of state. Uh, the Zermani leak, I, now I will give some, um, some hints about uh, some ideas about how the uh, Zermani leak thorn uh, uh, code uh, works. So basically, it considers uh, several dominant processes uh, for the production of neutrinos, uh, which are the electron capture, the positron capture, the pair annihilation, and the plasmon decay. And then there is a, a variable that uh, is uh, it, it is the, the central variable for, ne for the neutrino leakage, and it is uh, the optical depth. Uh, the optical depth that in the case of, of uh, assuming 
uh, isotropic neutrino radiation can be expressed uh, as this integral, basically uh, depending on uh, the opacity k, rho, and the um, and the three dimensional and the three uh, the space uh, uh, three space metric. Uh, so basically, uh, the neutrino leakage code in, in uh, Zermani leakage uh, consider two uh, regimes. So a diffusive regime for densities above 10 to the 12 gram per centimeter cube. Here you have uh, several sources of opacity. Basically, uh, there is the, the scattering of neutrino on, on neutrinos on uh, nu uh, nu nucleons and on nuclei. And there is also uh, the electron uh, uh, neutrinos and uh, antineutrinos uh, absorption into neutrons. Basically, all these uh, uh, processes uh, uh, give, uh, uh, may, may allow, allows you to estimate for the cross section for such uh, uh, process. And you can compute, uh, give an estimation for the opacity, the number rate, the energy rate, and the energy uh, coupled to this kind of process. Uh, and then there is also the uh, free streaming regime. So the, the regime in which the neutrinos uh, are emitted and are allowed to, to carry away energy. And this regards the rest mass density uh, below the above uh, uh, limit. And here you, can, you have to consider the dominant processes uh, of uh, the previous slide plus the Bremsstrahlung. Um, and here you can estimate always the uh, number rate and the energy rate uh, for every process, which is always um, a function of the temperature, uh, where the temperature uh, is uh, more than, uh, is, is, mm, okay, is dependent from, from the temperature more than linearly. Uh, well above uh, than linearly. So basically, uh, this, give a, give, this gives you an hint that uh, constraining the temperature can avoid uh, some issues at the neutron star surfaces, because at the neutron star surfaces, when, where the, uh, the, the density is, uh, is closer to the atmosphere, to the artificial atmosphere, you have uh, uh, more particles that are free to move, and you have uh, the, the greatest uh, change in the temperature, and this can give you some issues. Uh, then the neutrino leakage also uh, allows you to consider the, the heating, so neutrino reabsorption, and you can give an estimate for the energy uh, for each of the processes, uh, um, together with the, the um, energy rate for the heating. And you can also give an estimation for the luminosity in the fluid rest frame for, for each kind, for each species of neutrinos, uh, which is a function that depends on uh, the radius, the distance, so basically from the center, uh, the lapse, the um, Lorentz factor, the velocity, and the, the energy rate for, for each neutrinos. Uh, the neutrino leakage uh, scheme implemented in uh, Zelmani leak allows you also to um, deal uh, with the change in the pressure that may happen when, uh, because of, uh, of the production of neutrinos. So basically, there is a, um, a term, uh, PNU, uh, which comes out from the neutrinos that should be considered in the source term. This is uh, non-trivial. Uh, and basically, uh, it also it has a, um, as a feature a, a ray by ray approach. So every hydro variable that is provided in uh, Cartesian coordinates, can, Cartes, Cartesian coordinates is interpolated in spherical coordinates uh, in order to give you the optical depth. And the optical depth is then interpolated back to uh, Cartesian coordinates. Uh, it also uh, operate in, a, um, in, a man, in an operator split manner. So basically, um, it, it also um, updates the electron fraction and uh, energy density at each time step via the, the prim to con. Um, at each prim to con. And um, here I give you uh, also an, uh, an equation for the, the luminosity observed by an observer at infinity. So basically, uh, the authors of the code in the paper uh, write such a, um, an expression in spherical coordinates. Here you should consider basically the, uh, the, um, the redshift factor together with the, the proper distance factor, let's say. 
and you have to translate uh, this expression in Cartesian coordinates because basically Sp uh, Spritz is a Cartesian coordinate um, uh, code. Uh, so these are all the features uh, of uh, more or less the old ideas for uh, the zelmani leak code. And then we decided to um, uh, perform several tests for the implementation of, uh, of the neutrino leakage scheme uh, and for the implementation of the tabulated equation of state. So uh, we performed uh, some tests in full 3D or uh, in octant symmetry. We, we adopt uh, uh, both Spritz and GR Hydro code because GR Hydro uh, has also, has already the, the, um, equation, the tabulated equation of state uh, uh, implementation. Uh, so basically, this is this um, is useful for us uh, as a, a cross reference in order to see if uh, we are obtaining uh, correct results. Uh, we consider uh, both uh, the slicing method, uh, so constant temperature slices or uh, constant temperature temperature slices uh, for initial data. And then the every variable is left uh, free to evolve, so the temperature evolution is always performed. But for some tests, uh, we decided to uh, switch on the temperature evolution after some time in order to see uh, if our scheme is able to get the correct results. Um, then also, uh, we performed some tests, uh, most of the tests in pure hydro, but also some tests uh, uh, considering a strong magnetic field uh, uh, of the order of 10 to the 16 uh, Gauss. And some tests are with uh, uh, leakage scheme and some tests without. So basically, this is a, a um, ah, the the um, the features of our tests are basically the common feature is uh, that uh, every test run with uh, the LS two hundred and twenty tabulated equation of state available at the Compose website. We adopt five refinement levels with the finest uh, refined region. Uh, with a resolution of roughly 180 meters in the interior of the neutron star. And here you can see the evolution of uh, the rest mass density in the case of uh, constant, entropy, uh, constant entropy initial data with no leakage. You can see that uh, uh, the full 3D01, which is the red curve, is perfectly matching the octant uh, symmetry 02 with the GR hydro and 03 uh, with spritz and also the 13 with the, with the magnetic field. So basically from, from there we, we see that the implementation seems to work uh, perfectly good when, when not considering uh, neutrino leakage. Uh, we have also a plot here for the maximum temperature evolution. We see that uh, there are some, several oscillations in the maximum temperature that uh, shows an increasing overall uh, average trend, let's say. Um, but here, uh, again, the, the results uh, uh, seems to be in perfect match between them. Uh, we, then we also performed uh, the constant temperature initial data uh, slicing condition, uh, and we performed the, um, the evolution of such data, of such initial data, uh, considering also the scheme switching. So basically, when you allow the scheme, the, um, the method to evolve temperature from some point on, uh, this requires, in particular, I didn't mention this before, this requires a scheme switching because uh, when dealing with constrained temperature, you should, you should use, uh, uh, the, the, let's say, the classical contuprim, while when, when you uh, allows for the temperature uh, to evolve, uh, you should switch in the scheme of the conservatives, uh, from, of the conservative to primitive. So basically, um, you should consider also uh, the fact that the, the tau uh, conserved variable is not, uh, uh, up, maybe not updated, so you should uh, recompute the tau variable. And uh, you see that indeed, uh, after two milliseconds when the scheme is switched, we have a big uh, shock in the, in the um, rest mass, but then the, after uh, some oscillation, these, uh, these oscillations are uh, dumped and the, basically the evolution of the rest mass uh, show uh, match with the, with the other uh, simulation. We also show the, the plot for the maximum temperature. Here you see that uh, the blue dotted uh, curve is the one uh, constraining temperature up to two. And then the temperature is left free to evolve. Uh, 
And um, then we also performed some tests with the leakage on. So basically here you see that um, the, the constant uh, entropy initial data, which are uh, evolved with the leakage scheme. And you see that more or less we obtain the same, no more or less, this is a, we, we check this it and uh, this is a perfect match uh, uh, with the non-leakage uh, evolution. Uh, so this is uh, encouraging. Uh, we also have uh, the same plot for the, temp the maximum temperature. Uh, we consider also, as I said before, uh, some simulation with magnetic field. This is a picture that uh, shows how the magnetic field uh, is implemented within the neutron star interior. Basically, the red curve is the neutron star surface which is plotted considering uh, uh, the rest mass uh, ten, uh, of the order of uh, 10 to the 6 uh, to the, um, times uh, the atmosphere value. Uh, then you can see that uh, the, the magnetic field uh, is depicted uh, with the, the color bar and uh, the, list, the, the lines shows the, the isocontours of uh, A phi, so the, the five uh, components of the vector potential. We show also a uh, match, uh, comparison between the leakage versus non-leakage magnetized maximum uh, norm of magnetic field. So here we see that uh, implementing leakage uh, does, doesn't uh, interfere with the magnetic field evolution. And we also have a plot for the luminosity at infinity for uh, one of the simulation. This is the one in octant symmetry uh, starting with constant uh, uh, entropy initial data, uh, constant entropy slicing initial data. And uh, here you see that uh, the luminosity observed from infinity is of the order of 10 to the 51, which is a very low luminosity uh, in comparison with what uh, you get from BNS. From BNS, you, should, uh, you usually get uh, uh, 100 uh, times uh, this value, so basically 10 to the 53. And here we see that uh, our dominant uh, process uh, is the production of uh, um, electron neutrinos, which uh, uh, gives an hint that uh, maybe the, the, the dominant process here is the um, uh, electron capture. Uh, uh, and basically, uh, while the, the other species are uh, uh, produce less less luminosity. Basically, the the, the least one, the latest, the smallest one is the antineutrino component, and that they are the uh, the massive neutrinos which are uh, intermediate. But uh, in the NUX, uh, you you should consider uh, four species of uh, of neutrinos. So you should divide this value uh, for four. Uh, for the next development, we would like to uh, continue with this uh, evolution. So consider the T-slicing plus leakage with and without magnetic field. And uh, we, want, uh, we want to continue our comparison and analysis of results. We have more or less uh, 16 simulations to compare uh, and analyze. We have also some future ideas. Uh, so basically, as I mentioned before, we are actually able to uh, start the temperature evolution from some, uh, from some time uh, on. And this uh, maybe is useful when, uh, when you have to uh, simulate a BNS because you can uh, keep the temperature constrained until the merger in, uh, begin. Uh, in order not to obtain uh, uh, too much spurious neutrino production. And we would like also to, to control when the neutrino leakage is to be performed, because we notice that uh, performing the neutrino leakage uh, may uh, add several operations to the, to, the, to the software. So basically, it, uh, it, it, it gets uh, slower and uh, we want to uh, avoid any possible uh, uh, slowing in the, in the program execution, and we want to also to avoid uh, possible uh, spurious oscillation uh, of, from neutrinos. And we are also dealing with some parallel projects. So there is the uh, WinOZ order scheme for the reconstruction that uh, is currently under testing and is led by Beatrice Giudici at the University of Milano Bicocca. And we are also uh, implementing a new contouring scheme, 
which is by a, a work by Jay Kalinani and Wolfgang uh, Kastown. And um, this, this new scheme also uh, will allow the user to uh, adopt a tabulated equation of state. And this, is, uh, this may be relevant because uh, uh, when you consider only one count to prim, uh, it can be less robust. So you, um, in particular, now we have uh, only one method that is the 1D method, Palenzuela 1D method. And uh, without, with uh, an additional count to prime, maybe uh, we can we can get we can get uh, more robust uh, uh, behavior of the code. Then I also I'm also porting the Spritz code in the TCAN collaboration. The TCAN collaboration is our, as uh, Manuela told us uh, yesterday, introdu introduced us yesterday. Basically, is a very large collaboration with a long term with the goal of uh, performing a long term. Uh, BNS simulation, considering uh, every kind of feature possible. So the dynamic algebra MHD, uh, nuclear uh, neutrino physics, uh, every kind of equation of state, neutrino photon transport, uh, art processes, uh, and nucleosynthesis. We want to be able to uh, model uh, all these, uh, these features. And uh, in order to do this, as the collaboration is very big, we are trying to take advantage of uh, the strength of uh, the several code that are involved in the collaboration. So, for example, to give you an hint, as uh, uh, Zach was saying before, basically when you consider uh, absence of symmetry, uh, so per, for example, during a merger, uh, the Cartesian coordinates may be, uh, may be the best choice. While when considering uh, axial symmetry, for example, two stars that are rotating, uh, far away, spherical coordinates instead may be the best. So uh, basically, uh, or, or uh, no, in axial symmetry, maybe when, uh, when you have um, uh, a stable neutron star uh, that is evolving, that is rotating. Uh, so this is a snapshot from uh, the end of work by Federico uh, Lopez et al. And basically here you show uh, it's shown um, a snapshot of the BNS um, post end of uh, uh, simulation. Um, so you have uh, um, a merger that is performed with the IGM code in Cartesian coordinates. And after the merger, the data are passed to the, uh, to the ARM3D spherical coordinate codes. And you see that uh, you can get, uh, you can get uh, pretty, pretty uh, beautiful results. The next step for the spritz in particular in this uh, collaboration are uh, more or less uh, listed here. So basically uh, I am working within the end of uh, project and we already performed uh, uh, a Fishbone Moncrief end of impure hydro, Fishbone Moncrief disk uh, simulation, passing the data from spritz to ARM3D. Uh, I am currently investigating on the implementation of the magnetic field uh, through the, the vector potential in the end of script. And this may be useful both for uh, spritz and IGM. Uh, we are uh, planning to compare uh, the ARM, the ARM post-end of evolution data uh, um, obtained by IGM and spritz in order to, to see what is the difference between the two codes. Uh, we want to, uh, in, in addition, we want to uh, compare uh, the IGM and spritz with other uh, simulation adopting the tabulated equation of state, for example, uh, which, uh, which will be a feature common to, to both the codes. And we are also planning to evolve a binary black hole, evolved magnet, uh, magnetized uh, binary black hole, um, where the, the magnetic field is evolved via the vector potential. Uh, in order to obtain a circumbinary disk. So we want to basically start from uh, the spherical NR framework, which is a spherical coordinate code, which can deal uh, with uh, axis symmetry uh, for, uh, for black holes that uh, are uh, um, far enough. And then from some point on, we want to pass the, the evolution to the spritz code, which is fully in full, Carti in full uh, Cartesian, full 3D uh, Cartesian uh, uh, framework in order to perform uh, the evolution. Uh, okay, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Federico. Uh, we have time for questions. Um, 
Okay. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, yeah, please ask your question. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I have a small question. I kind of forgot to ask it last time. So when you pass your uh, simulation from one code to another, from when, when you pass it from Cartesian to a uh, spherical coordinate system, wouldn't you introduce or uh, wash out certain uh, oscillations or information in this procedure? Yes, indeed. Indeed, for example, in the end of, we, we saw that there are some, uh, some numerical oscillation uh, that, uh, that are causing some issues, and we are trying to deal uh, with that. And this, uh, this uh, requires a fine tuning of parameters and, uh, for example, for the arti artificial atmosphere and so on. But uh, probably uh, Federico will talk about this uh, later. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Are there other questions? Um, I have one, but I can't raise my hands for today. I'm not sure why it disappeared from my screen. Can I ask? Oh, sure. Okay. So Federico, uh, so we heard uh, from the previous talk about NER NER NERPI, uh, the use of NERPI. How um, are you guys also using a similar framework or using NERPI to generate your code? Okay, still not. Uh, indeed, uh, in the maybe I forgot to mention one future ideas, which is uh, <laughs> very new because we talked about this uh, at uh, tomorrow today morning uh, telecon with our collaborators. But basically, one of the future points for the speed code would be to um, uh, optimize the code because actually it is um, it is written in Fortran, and we would like to uh, pass to C at some point. And uh, indeed, I would like uh, to, to ask uh, uh, Zach if it's possible to, to port uh, Spritz uh, to Chi in a, in a similar way or in which uh, Irinogel MHD has been ported uh, uh, to C, basically. Uh, and I think that, uh, that this framework can be really, really uh, useful for that. This may be a tool uh, to, to consider. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, I think what you'll find is, is NERPI is pretty agnostic to code. It's uh, the code that the kernels are embedded in. It provides the low levels. It's, it's at such a low level, the code that it provides, that you can basically use it anywhere where you have, you know, wrapper C functions. You could even call C functions from Fortran if you like. But, uh, but yeah, um, by all means, reach out when, uh, when you're ready. I'm, I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. Um, but I, I have a question regarding um, the A-field staggering. Um, yes. so I think in the slide there, you, you showed the, advan the, the advantages of the staggering scheme. Yes. Yeah. I was just wondering, is, is, that, is that error that you see in the non-staggered, is that something which you know will converge away? Or is that, I mean, will that blow up? What, what's no, going on there? It remains, uh, this post shock oscillation remains uh, constant in amplitude. Uh, basically, what's, what happens when you, con you don't consider uh, staggering, you have to consider uh, uh, um, a dissipation factor, a uh, Chris Oliger dissipation in the magnetic field. And uh, here, uh, we basically model uh, the Balsara shock tube test without dissipation and without staggering. And this is what we get. We get this post shock oscillation that are kept uh, constant uh, in the amplitude and uh, travels away uh, at, post at post shock. So after this uh, big jump here. And uh, this is mainly due probably to the fact that uh, with the magnetic field evolution, you don't have uh, the, the, free, uh, the divergence free character that is uh, Con uh, that, that is uh, uh, kept, uh, kept at uh, machine precision level. While considering the staggering ve uh, vector potential evolution, you have uh, this feature. So you, you, you have the, the magnetic field that is, uh, the, the divergence free condition that is uh, satisfied at machine, machine precision. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that we are, uh, oh, Zach, you have a question? 
Um, yeah, when I can find my unmute button. Uh, yeah, so um, I just wanted to comment that back in the day when we were first developing the code on which Illinois GMHD is based on, we actually, our first attempt was an unstaggered A field prescription. And what we found was something that looks very similar to what you see in that inset uh, when we perform, for example, the, um, uh, the magnetized Bondi flow problem. Um, and we see that creeping out of a black hole, basically. It's like a zigzag kind of a pattern. Granted, we, I don't think we actually uh, turn on Chrysalmogra dissipation, but the bottom line is when the magnetic fields exhibit sharp features with an unstaggered, um, sometimes, you, even if you have this Chrysalmogra dissipation turned on to sort of damp away these high frequency oscillations, it's not enough sometimes. And uh, I think that's basically what we're seeing here. So it's definitely consistent with my experience. And I think probably if, if I were to spend a few months analyzing this, I, I, my hypothesis is it, it's some sort of a checkerboard-like um, instability um, around sharp features. That's just my guess. Yes. Okay. Yes, indeed, uh, Zach is right. I was confused. I, I mentioned the divergence free condition, but in this case, uh, in the, vec the self-centered vector potential, in theory, it should be at mass imprecision, uh, while uh, you effectively see these, uh, these features here, and uh, probably what was saying Zach uh, is the correct answer. And uh, yes, also from a mm, complete theoretical point of view, when you stagger the vector potential, you obtain a sort of solenoid in to in, on, around this, the, the self faces and you get, uh, in some way, a natural, a natural uh, uh, modeling for the, for the magnetic field. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um...